challenges posed by the Omicron variant. Throughout this pandemic, I made a promise to you to speak plainly about the virus and how Ontario is responding, to share with you what I know, what our experts have told us, and to never shy away from being up front with the people of Ontario. As you know, like in other provinces and countries around the world, Omicron case counts are rising exponentially across the province. We face a tsunami of new cases in the days and weeks ahead. And as we do, virtually everyone in this province will know someone who has been exposed to this virus. Now, we're bracing for impact. Based on our real world experience here in Ontario, the evidence tells us that about 1% of people who get Omicron will end up in the hospital. That may not seem a lot, and under past waves, it might have been something we could withstand, but Omicron isn't like the other variants. It's much, much more transmissible. So the math isn't on our side. Based on the current trends, our public health experts tell us we could see hundreds of thousands of cases every single day. 1% of hundreds of thousands is too many new patients for our hospitals to handle. Over the past few days, we've started to see an alarming number of new hospital admissions. Now, with triple-digit admissions into hospitals every single day, this is a problem that will only get worse as we confront the looming wave of Omicron. The reality is that people are coming into hospital and leaving soon after, sometimes only staying for a couple days. This is a very different problem than we faced in the past, when COVID hospitals stay were weeks of long in intensive care units. But even so, with Omicron surging across Ontario at a current rate, Ontario Health Modeling tells us we could be thousands of beds short in the coming weeks. We can't let that happen. This data is clear call to further action. We must do everything in our powers to protect our hospitals and to ensure our frontline workers aren't overwhelmed. We've been adding new beds across the province for many months and will continue to do so. The investments we've made in our hospitals are larger than any previous government in the history of Ontario. But with a variant as infectious as Omicron, with spreads like nothing we've seen before, adding capacity alone isn't enough. We need to implement measures that further reduce contacts and mobility. Effective Wednesday, January 5th at 12.01 a.m., Ontario will return to a modified step two of the roadmap to reopen. The plan will be released before we confronted Omicron laid out two clear reasons why we would implement province-wide measures. First, the introduction of a new variant. Second, if our healthcare system was threatened. Today, we face both of these. Our plan demands that we implement additional public health measures. Minister Elliott will share details with you shortly on what exactly this entails. But it will mean the closure of more indoor spaces where we know the risk of transmission is higher, especially with Omicron. But let me be clear, these will be targeted and they will be time limited. The immediate goal of these measures will be to blunt the latest wave so we can ease the pressure on our hospitals and allow more time to deliver these all important booster shots, which continue at a tremendous pace. Because vaccines remain the key to our long-term success against this virus, and the call to arms we issued last month has been answered loud and clear. We have delivered over 24 million shots to Ontarians including 3.7 million booster shots. And over 1,300 regulated healthcare professionals, both active and retired, have stepped up to support the vaccine effort. This includes firefighters, 
first responders, first responders and health professionals. This display of selflessness and Ontario spirit has exceeded our expectations. And we are so grateful to each and every one of them, but we need to give our booster effort time it needs to succeed. And that means doing whatever possible to slow the spread of Omicron. And I say slow the spread because it can't be stopped. Look to other countries, other provinces. It's too contagious to stop completely. So we need to slow it down in order to deliver these shots and ensure our hospitals stay strong. That is what these measures will do. So there is no choice but to act quickly and get them in place for a limited period of time. But just because the way forward was clear, that doesn't mean these decisions are without cost. And I understand these costs are significant and the hardship of these decisions are not shared equally. That's why we're introducing expanded supports for small businesses. And it's why I've asked Minister Bethenfalvy to continue working on fast tracking more supports for businesses that have already shouldered so much of this pandemic. And to all the parents, I'm going to tell you that these measures will have an effect on our schools as well. We need to prioritize the continued health and safety of our kids and our school staff. As a result, we'll be delaying the return to in-class learning for the next two weeks and continue with virtual learning for the duration of the time away. I know this isn't the news anyone wants to hear, but with the new variant, the ground is shifting every single day. The level of absenteeism we're seeing in other sectors tells us with absolute certainty that operating schools ensuring teachers are on the job and not homesick will be a challenge we cannot overcome in the short term. These two weeks will provide much needed time for more vaccines, more boosters. It's more time for additional public health measures to blunt the rapid rise in cases. I know online learning isn't ideal, but above all else, I want to provide students and parents with certainty. Not the turmoil of school closures because not enough staff are available to teach our kids. Now these decisions will disappoint people, they will confuse some people, and they will anger some people. I understand all those reactions. As Premier, these are the hardest decisions I make, but we follow the data. And the fact is this, Omicron spreads like wildfire. It only takes the smallest opportunity to infect. And if we do not act, if we don't do everything possible to get this variant under control, the results could be catastrophic. It is a risk I cannot take. Not after what we've been through and what we've been able to accomplish together. We are now entering the third calendar year of this pandemic. It has been the greatest challenge of our generation. We want this to be the year when we finally win the war against COVID and begin the road to recovery. To do that, we must show more determination, more resolve than ever before. It's never been easy and it won't start now, but we can and we will get through this. I want to thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll pass. Pass it over to Mr. Elliot.